Hello everyone. Up for sale today is a, a Tandy Model 2. Uh, it's a machine that I've had for a little while now and we've been working on it here and there when I've gotten the time and the parts have come in. Uh, this machine has pretty much been upgraded as much as you can minus an external hard drive or external um, floppies of any sort. It does have the one built-in single-sided 8-inch floppy which is working great. Uh, in addition to that though I've added one of the uh, low-tech compact flash adapters for Tandy. Now this card won't work natively in the Model 2, but uh, if you go look through the Vintage Computer Forum, you'll find that there's a guy named Hans uh, out of Germany who invented a little card that will adapt this board to work. And I took some photos of it, which you'll see in the listing, but the card's actually plugged into the eighth slot down here. And there's a 50 pin cable coming up and connecting into the card. And there's one other modification that you have to do to this card to make it work. And, uh, it's one of the, the chips on there that usually works on a Model 1, 3, or 4 uh, was changed to actually work on a Model 2. And everything is working great on it now. I uh, Also, Hans had created an image for this uh, machine, which boots a uh, LS-DOS. And actually, it won't boot on its own. You have to have a boot floppy. But once it comes up, this mounts four different hard drives. And I didn't actually put the software on there. That's what Hans had put in. But... Uh, there's several programs on there and of course you can copy anything you want from your floppy drive over. Uh, I also did at one point have an HXC floppy emulator plugged into the back which uh, the disk terminator board is actually inside of this machine so you can if you want make your own connector and do that. I didn't do that because I do have another machine that I can make 8 inch disks on and I made a number of 8 inch disks. And the other thing this machine has is three boards in it which is the 68,000 processor as well as two 256k memory boards. Um, this card is actually meant for a Tandy 6000 and this is a Model 2 so technically the board doesn't work in there but I did run the diagnostics on it and you'll see that everything passes except for one thing which is the 68000 to Z80 CTC handshake and after talking to some folks on the uh, computer forum, the vintage computer forum it looks like that's expected behavior because there was some plumbing in the Tandy 6000 that just doesn't exist in the Tandy 2 so otherwise it's working and uh, unfortunately, I can't install Xenix or anything on here that runs 68,000 code because I don't have the proper hard drive and unfortunately the uh, low-tech doesn't support Xenix. Uh, someone would have to write a driver for it and at this point that hasn't happened. It only supports the native Tandy hard drive and the hard drive card, but those things are getting harder to find these days and unfortunately I don't have one. Uh, in addition to the modifications that I've done to it, I did actually replace the power supply with four separate switching power supplies. The reason for this is to make sure that you have enough power uh, for the 68,000 CPU and the memory boards and then you add-ons. And actually what you see in here are, you know, there's the fourth one, that's the negative, uh, I believe it was negative 12. I can't remember now <laughs> what all the voltages were. I think it was 24 and that drives the motor on the floppy. 5 volts, 12 volts, and negative 12 or negative 5, I forget. Uh, but that's actually the negative transformer, I just couldn't fit it on the board here. But everything's wired up and working great. One of the good side effects of this was two things. One, you don't have to worry about any Mylar capacitors blowing up and you also get less interference it seems on the monitor which is a good thing. Uh, before I had the old power supply in here and it was creating quite a bit of noise and causing the screen image to not be particularly stable but now uh, it seems to be working okay. And what I've done is I've just left the back off the machine. It's over here uh, for the moment so I can show you that it powers up and everything's working okay. And you can see the lights flashing on the, the uh, low-tech uh, controller here. So let me get the power plug it in. Yeah, power plugged in now. Also, this one does have the keyboard cover, which is pretty nice. It's a little scuffed up, but it's still there, which is a good thing. The uh, one other modification that we made to this is the uh, key, uh, keyboard uses a Keytronic and those pads tend to go bad, those foam uh, pads go flat and my wife has actually figured out a nice way to make those with a, a punch and some foam and these aren't included but I just wanted to show you that uh, we actually have made quite a few of our own contacts to replace these in old keyboards and we did replace all the ones in here too before only about five keys were working uh, and now everything's working great so I'm gonna for actually the first thing I want to do, here's the floppy disks I made and this is actually a special LS-DOS boot disk which has the drivers for the low-tech IDE controller and you'll have to put this disk in to boot it up 
Uh, I made several other discs here. I actually made two copies of this disc just in case you had a problem with one. But uh, they're both working okay. Put the disc in and then power it up. Also, the switch doesn't click. I don't know if the original one did, but it's, it's fairly soft. It turns on and off just fine, but I was expecting it to actually have a nice, satisfying click to it, but it doesn't. So here's LS DOS coming up, and it's asking for a date, and I'm surprised, but. Oops. I always put 89 in because it's not happy with. I'm not sure what year it likes to go up to, but it seems to be happy with 89, so I'm just typing in bogus date. And it's booting up. So now, what I'm going to do is just do a directory real quick to show you that it's. Uh, I think Hans made this for a Model 16, which had two floppies, or he had an HXC with two floppies in it. And there's a, the floppy that's in there. And now it's looking for drive one, which doesn't exist, but now it's actually showing the hard drive. And if you see here, it shows HD1. And keep going through, and these are the programs that Hans put on the disk image. There's drive five. Drive six. I think that was seven. All right, I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. I think the camera scrolled away from it. As you can see, there's a ton of space left on that drive as well. I'm going to stop for a minute and put this on the tripod so I can show you a few things on here. But before I do that, let me just do a directory one more time, and I'll show you. With adapter up here. Let's zoom in on it. You can see right now the power lights on. And as I understand, the lights just mimic the lights that are on the original hard drive. So right now it's doing the directory on the floppy. And once it hits the hard drive, you'll see the light flash for the activity. Right. There it went. space bar here to let it cycle through all the drives. Okay. I'm going to pause for one second. Uh, yeah, before I put this on the tripod, I was just going to show that it will actually load programs off of here. Now, be, be aware that there's several programs on here, uh, in particular things that require the high graphics boards and other things like that that won't run. Uh, in particular here, Video Poker, one of the first things I tried, uh, requires banked memory, which this machine doesn't have. And again, I think that's available on some of the other systems. So you know, be aware that I think a lot of these programs were made for a Model 16 or a Model 6000 um, that were you know, actually not intended to run on this machine. It's just what happens to be on the image. But one of the things that I know will load is Rider. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna see down here. I'm, it's kinda hard to see, but I'm trying to load that up. And really what I wanna show is that it loads off of the drive here. So I'm gonna hit enter. See it accessing the disk. And I guess there's some driver not loaded for ASCII or something. I don't know why I did that, but it comes up and it's ready to go. And one other thing I'm going to do before I put it on the tripod and show that uh, I have a couple other parts that come with this. This is the lid, of course, for it. It comes with the floppies here. And as I mentioned, there's two copies of LS DOS, uh, which has the IDE bootable. Uh, stuff on there. Let me zoom in a little better. I'll show all the discs we have. That one, uh, this is a diagnostics disc, which I'll run here in a minute and show the one failure that it creates, which again is expected for a Model 2 with a Model 6000, 68000 board in it. Uh, here's a games disc uh, for TRS-DOS version 2. There's another uh, version 2 boot disc. I don't remember what's on that one. Another, another one. It's got some different stuff on it. There's version 1.2. And another 2.0, and then that one's got COBOL. These had some various programs on them, and honestly, when I made the labels, I couldn't remember what was on what. But these are just images that I'd made before I got the hard drive to work, and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and throw them in, including a couple of boot disks. This is really the only 68,000 code that I'm able to run on the machine, unfortunately, because Xenix and uh, the 68K version of CPM require the 
standard Tandy hard drive. Uh, the driver for this card only works with LS-DOS, so when you put the discs in here other than LS-DOS boot disc, the hard drive is not going to work. So just be aware, it's kind of a limited use situation, but it's kind of neat that it works at all. I mean, you still can run quite a few things from there. You can run basic and uh, pretty much anything that's in underneath that. You can also take the IDE controller out and over here, you'll see that this little cable is actually to power the uh, disc, disc module. And uh, last thing I have is new in a package, a serial cable for a host. So you can, if you ever do get a hard drive adapter or anything like that, you can run Xenix and here's your uh, brand new serial cable ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the tripod now. And uh, the other thing I'm gonna show here is that the back of this card, I've put some plastic on it. That's why it's not shorting out sitting here on the floppy drive right now. And I'm just gonna kind of stuff it down inside of the case down here in the bottom. Unfortunately, there's not really a better place for me to mount it without cutting some holes in the box. And I certainly don't wanna do that. Uh, but I'll turn it off here for a second, put the card in where I'm gonna leave it. Uh, and also you see that red wire running over here, that's actually just pulling 5 volts off of the power supplies here. And just an easier way to plumb it in. The Hans adapter does have a mounting bracket that you're supposed to put that card on, but since I've got the card cage fully populated, I really can't get it to comfortably fit in there with the disc module. Um, it, it, will, it will sort of fit, but I found this a better approach just to extend the cable out rather than trying to extend the disc module out. And I'm going to stop here for one second and stick it down the machine. Yeah, I started back up and as you can see it fits down in there and uh, I haven't buttoned it up yet but the cable doesn't actually short out against anything because of the plastic on the back of the card but also you can put the lid on it. Uh, the lid's pretty easy to take off. There's just two screws that hold the top on so it's pretty easy to take off and it's meant to be easy to work on. Um, unfortunately one of the screws I have for the back is not the original screw but I do have two that will hold it on there. One of them's black and one of them's silver so just be aware that Unfortunately, the one of them was missing when I got the machine, so I had to replace it. But the card seems to fit in there pretty nicely. I'm not sure when we ship it if I'm going to leave it in here because I don't want it bouncing around. I'm going to zip tie it in, and hopefully that will hold it in place. But you probably have to cut the zip tie if you ever want to access the module and put it in another machine. But otherwise, you're, you've got a disk module hidden in here, so it's basically got a hard drive built in. All right, well, I'm gonna mount it up on tripod now and show um, a couple of things in operation, including the diagnostics disc. It's pretty long, it takes, it takes a little over 10, 15 minutes to run. So I'm gonna probably fast forward that part of the video when it zips through there, just because it's pretty boring to watch, but you'll see that the memory boards pass and everything passes on the system. Okay, one, one more quick video before I put it on the tripod here. I just went ahead and put the case back on it and the uh, IDE controller is down inside of there. Um, Mounted securely. There's the terminator for the floppy drive. Has a parallel port. It's a little difficult to see, as well as two serial ports. And uh, there are some scrapes and scuffs on this case. It's definitely been used, and I guess this machine's probably oh, 36, 37 years old now, but still working pretty well for its age. And right, here does the startup again. I uh, just wanted to show real quick that the reset switch works just fine. It's already up and running and I hit reset on it, so now it should just come back up and remember the date. So the hard drive is still working. And drive seven. Very last one. I'll also show real quick that all the keys are working. And here's the keypad. Um, all the keys seem to be working. They do require a bit of a firm touch sometimes, and I think that's just kind of the nature of the the plastic in these keyboards. It's really stiff uh, and the springs themselves are pretty stiff so you have to hit pretty directly down on the keys but I don't think that's abnormal for the Model 2. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take the floppy out now for LS-DOS. I'm going to put the diagnostics disc in. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run it. Sorry it's dark. I have to turn the lights off to get the screen to come in well on the camera. I'm going to put the diagnostics disc in real quick. Reset the machine. 
and I'm going to run 68,000 mode diagnostics first just to show that all that succeeds and runs except for the one failure with the uh, 68,000 CPU will not talk to the CTC on the Z80 uh, side uh, just due to a limitation on the fact that this is a Model 2 and not a Model 6000. I did confirm that through the forum and it sounds to me like Xenix should work uh, in this configuration. Okay, so there we go. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little better on the screen here so you can see this. Okay. And I'm going to run number two here, which is the 68000's diagnostics. And I'm going to go ahead and run the full diagnostics. And this does take a few minutes. And like I said, I'm going to run fast forward probably through this portion of the video just because it takes a while. But I'm going to do uh, comprehensive diagnostics here. And it's loading up. And now it says it's copying the program over to 68,000 memory. And unfortunately, this is the only test that seems to actually use the 68,000 processor. Now that this is up and running, I'm going to go ahead and do automatic test mode and uh, let it go. And you can see there, top of memory 7FFFF, uh, which equals 512K on the 68,000 side. The Z80 side has 64K. And this is about the time where I'll be uh, fast forwarding. Okay, the test just completed, it looks like. Uh, 68,000 interrupt test failed, and that's the one that uh, I'm going to go ahead and run it individually just so you can see what's going on there. Let's do a single run of it. And right there, uh, all the software interrupts work, the Z80 control interrupts work. Uh, the one that's failing at the very bottom there says 68,000 interrupt to Z80. Uh, the error that comes back is, if you can't read it on here, is can't verify Z80 CTC count. And that's what I was talking about before, which is the fact that uh, the Model 6000 apparently has some different plumbing, uh, which handles that CTC interrupt better. Uh, the good news is I don't think Xenix and other operating systems use this particular interrupt, so I don't think it will actually cause any software to fail. But unfortunately, without the hard drive controller, I'm unable to run it, so I can't really tell for sure. So I'm going to go ahead and reset real quick, and I'm going to go run the uh, Z80 tests real quick now. Okay. So seven. I'm do auto here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop this test. It's been running for 10 minutes now and uh, can take a while. I'm going to reset the machine. Maybe I can break this. There we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do after uh, running the test here, I'm going to go ahead and put the LS-DOS disk back in and just load a few things in basic. Okay, 
Here's the disc. And turn it back on. Directory again. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and load up uh, basic here, G basic. I'll try to run a few different programs. I haven't tried to run too many basic programs on this guy just yet, and honestly, like I said, this stuff is what was just provided on the image. I don't know that all of it's going to work. Um, some of this stuff requires probably a high graphics board, which this machine does not have, but there's one called break up here, which I'm wondering if it's break out. Let's take a look and see. Drive 7. Oh, file breakup utility. Well, there at least it enumerated all the drives here and how much space is free. As you can see, drive zero is the L LDOS disk um, with 2.5K free. That's got quite a number of utilities on it. Uh, drive one is no disk because there's nothing plugged in externally, but four, five, six, and seven are the four hard drive partitions or drives that are showing up. Uh, each of those with about six and a half megs each, or just, I guess, a little over six megs each. And I think that's the maximum this drive uh, device could support uh, per disk, but I'm not gonna break any programs up here. So let me break out of this and I'll type new. And I'll try another one. Uh, let's see. I wrote down a couple of the ones that are on Drive 7. There's one called... Well, let's try the demo. Not sure what that is. Oh, there we go. Microsoft Basic Compiler Demo Program. Blazing graphics. I guess that's all it does. <laughs> New. I suspect the reason those aren't running is they probably require the high graphics board, which this machine again does not have, unfortunately. Uh, what was the other one I was going to try here? Uh, L graph, which also doesn't sound promising, but we'll see what it does. Yep, that one's working. <laughs> Didn't do much. Well, anyway, it's, it is loading up basic programs, and I'll, uh, just to show that it does actually have some games, one of the discs that I have provided here is uh, TRS-DOS games. Now, this disc has to boot on its own, and it won't access the hard drives with TRS-DOS. Hit reset. Now it's going to load up TRS-DOS. And I think this is an auto-booting disc, which just brings up a menu that has uh, Star Trek and a few other games on it. There's some other software out there. If you go and look for the Tandy 2 archive, uh, it actually has quite a few disc images out there you can pull down and make your own floppies. Or if you have a HXC emulator, you can actually plug that in uh, to the back. I think I can have the time. Okay. Uh, no printer. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's just run Star Trek. 
And say yes for instructions. Do you not want them printed? I think I've played this one before. No, I don't want to see the instructions again. Yeah, I was watching one video online. They said there were no games for the Model 2, but it turns out there are a few. There we go. The orders are to destroy 16 Klingon warships which have invaded the galaxy before they can attack Federation headquarters on start date 2630. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm not going to play through this too much more. I think this video has probably gotten long enough. I just really wanted to show uh, that this machine does work and everything uh, seems to be pretty happy on it. I haven't tested every single possible thing on it, just to be clear. I mean, I'm pretty much what I've shown you is what I've tested. Um, but the cards seem to be working, the memory tests all passed, which I think is the most important thing. Um, the 68,000 boards are installed, but they don't do anything, unfortunately, unless you're able to put Xenix or another operating system. And at this point, the low-tech uh, Compact Flash IDE controller does not have any drivers written to work with Xenix or with the 68K versions of CPM. Uh, there is a version of CPM now which will run on that board. And if you go out to the Vintage Computer Forum, uh, bcfed.org, you can take a look around there and it'll actually show you how to make an image uh, to get CPM to run and boot off of the low-tech adapter. Uh, however, at this point it's a little bit limited in use and it's certainly a work in progress. However, um, I had to source parts from Australia and all sorts of different places in England to, to get this machine built. So uh, it's taken me quite a while to get it to the state that it's in and uh, it's working pretty well. I like the fact that it's got the new power supplies, and you can see on the uh, screen how stable the image is. It actually looks really good. Uh, usually they wobble a little bit, and it still wobbles a tiny bit when it's cold, but uh, once it warms up after a few minutes, it's a nice stable image. The 8-inch floppy drive works well. Uh, before I ship it and pack it, I'm going to throw my cleaning disc in there one more time to clean it up. We have about, I think it's 10 floppies that I've created here. And there's just some various software that I pulled off the forums. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10. Yep, 10 discs, and I'll include those. I'm also including the serial cable, and this is the power cable which uh, powers, I mean, it's probably hard to see it right now, but it's the uh, power cable that powers the disc module, which is plugged into the low-tech compact flash adapter. You'll need that if you plug it into a different PC to copy, you know, say a disc image over to it or something like that, and the uh, controller that you've plugged it into doesn't support power on pin 20. The low-tech card does have power on pin 20, so it's not necessary to leave it plugged in while it's in the machine here. It works fine without it. And uh, you do have to put in the LS-DOS disk to get to access the hard drive. Right now, that's the only disk that's going to come with this machine that will actually give you access to the hard drive on here. Otherwise, you can just use the floppies. And I would highly recommend getting an HXC emulator uh, and building an adapter to plug that into the 50-pin port on the back. And then you could easily make that drive one for this machine, which I did at various times while I was playing around with it and getting it to work. But fortunately, the floppies always worked. Uh, I just happened to have a second 8-inch floppy drive, which works as well on a PC. And using image disk, I'm able to create images for this machine. And that's where I've created these 10 disks. But there's other methods of getting that to work. I just haven't tried any of them. Um, the keyboard has the new pads in it, uh, which makes all the keys work, and uh, the lights light up on the caps lock and the uh, lock key. Uh, there are scuffs, various scuffs on the machine, and if you're looking at this on the eBay listing, you'll see uh, as good as I can get the pictures of it, but you know, it is a, probably, what, a 37-year-old machine, 36-year-old machine at this point, so it certainly has a little bit of age. And as I mentioned before, it's pretty noisy, but that's kind of the nature of the beast on uh, the Model 2s. They just were noisy to begin with. All right, well, thank you so much for watching, and sorry for the length of this video. I just wanted to make sure I captured everything I could think of on this machine and uh, give you as much data as I can. Thank you so much. Have a good day.